What is going on YouTube? My name is Brent and welcome to part 9 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Floppy Birds. So in this tutorial we're going to create more tube obstacles uh, that actually reposition themselves to remain close to our camera. So in this example, uh, you can think of the red square here is our bird. We have an obstacle that the bird is about to come to, an obstacle that it just passed, one that's coming into our camera, which is this black square here, and one that's just right off screen. So when this one, uh, the, the uh, uh, bird just passed, um, gets past the camera where the camera can no longer see it, we don't need it anymore because our, our bird can't go backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to reposition this tube over here. So it's outside of the current viewing angle, but the bird can actually go towards it. So to do that, let's go to our tube class. We're going to create a new uh, public void reposition method and we'll take in an int x for our x axis. Now what we're going to say is position of the top tube dot set and then what we can do is we can just copy this right here what we've already done and we'll paste it in here and then oops and then we'll do position same thing with the bottom tube dot set and we can again copy and paste here save us a little bit of time or at least me there we go okay so moving along uh, back to our play state let's create a couple of constants here so private static final int and we're gonna call this tube spacing this will be the space between tubes including one of the tubes themselves actually so the start of one tube to the start of another tube and we'll say that equals 125 and uh, then we'll create a private static final int um, tube count this is how many tubes total at any given time our game will actually have and we'll say that is going to be equal to four Okay, so let's go ahead and create our uh, array of tubes here. So we're going to create a private array, and we're using the libgdx array if you're importing um, modules. And we'll call this tubes. Now down here we'll say tubes equals new array of tube. There we go. Now let's create a for loop. For int i equals one i is less than tube count i plus plus so we're going to create four new tubes in our array we're going to say tubes dot add new tube at i times um we're going to create a tube times our tube spacing plus tube dot tube width and we're going to set that up right now let's go ahead and go back to tube here i happen to know that the size of our uh, uh, texture is 52 pixels so uh, private static final int tube width equals 52 and this is actually a public not a private and then now we can go back to our there we go so let's go ahead and get rid of our current tube that we have here because we're not going to be using that one. And we'll go down to our update method and this is where we're going to put uh, the logic for how to remove it or reposition a tube when it gets off the camera viewport. So what we'll do here is for tube tube in tubes, we're going to execute this code. So we're going to do an if statement here and we're going to see if a tube is off the side of the screen, the left side of the screen. So first we need to find the left side of the screen. To do that it's going to be camera dot position dot x minus uh, cam dot viewport width divided by two because if you remember the camera is centered in the middle of the screen so we need to move to the left of the center of the screen half of the viewport width is greater than um, tube dot get 
position of the top tube dot x plus tube dot get uh, top tube dot get width. So if uh, the tube is off to the left of the screen, uh, then we're going to execute uh, this if statement. And what is inside this if statement is tube.reposition. And we'll say tube.get position of the top tube again, dot x, so it's current position. Plus, now we need to move it all the way to the end of our tubes. Um, so we're going to create a tube dot tube width plus tube spacing. We're going to multiply that by our tube count. Okay, so there's a lot of math there. You may need to double check. And what is this? So we need to also go back and change this from an int to actually a float or forgot that because it could be partially on a, you know, an X axis or something like that. So now let's go back. That should fix our error and we can continue on. Next, let's go ahead and uh, go to our bird class and add a horizontal movement to him instead of just a vertical up and down gravity movement. So private static final int movement equals 100 and then what we'll do is when we're uh, doing our update on him we'll say movement times dt for the x-axis so uh, just a move related to our change in delta time for the frame and then finally what we have to do is go to our play state and we're going to update uh, our camera and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to update our camera's position in our game world based off where our bird is in the game world. So we're going to basically be following our bird. So we'll do that in the update method of our play state. We'll say cam.position.x um, equals bird.getposition.x plus 80 because we're going to offset the camera just a little bit in front of our bird. And then anytime we uh, change where our camera is, we have to update it. So cam.update, um, and that will tell libgdx uh, that the cam has been repositioned. So we're done. Let's go ahead and hit the run button here, test it out. Here we go. Uh, check that out. We don't have any collision yet, but it's working. It looks like we have a little bit of an error on tube four, it looks like. So let's go ahead and get that fixed. And the error is I didn't put less than or equal to tube count here when we were creating our tubes originally. So I never created that fourth tube. Maybe you guys caught that. If you did, bonus points. One more final test here. Let's see if everything's working. And it looks like it is. Awesome, we are making great progress. So I think that's it for this video. I'm sorry it ran a little bit long, but we had to pack a bunch of cool stuff into it. We created more tubes, we made a move, basically, by actually making the bird move and repositioning them in our game world uh, based off whether or not they were in the viewport of our camera. In the next tutorial, maybe we'll work on uh, Maybe moving, putting the ground in or maybe work on collision. I don't know yet, but find out next time. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.